Let's talk about the target. Here is the place in Oak Ridge, where the substance is produced, and then the targets are made. Let us look at the operation of a reactor, supposing that the starting material is plutonium-239. It starts with an accumulation of neutrons, and at the same time, beta decay occurs, leading to the next step after plutonium, which is americium. It, in turn, is captured again, and beta decay takes place once more. The next stage is curium, which is also captured, leading to berkelium and then californium. The californium is accumulated. The purpose of this reactor is to obtain californium-252, which works as a neutron source. Its half-life is 2.5 years, and 1 mg of this californium gives 2.5 times 10 to the power of 9 neutrons per second. In the United States, they decided to stop building new reactors and rather focus on californium production. There are 104 consumers of this specific californium. One reactor produces about half a gram every year. You can just imagine the large scale of production, considering that it is used for all research related to neutrons. We are not especially interested in Californium-252 produced in the cycle because it is impossible to work with. We are interested in the isotopes obtained along the way. Plutonium-42, Plutonium-44, Americium-43, Curium-45, Curium-46, Curium-48, which leads to Berkelium and then Californium-49. Here is the entire list of elements that we can use if we irradiate these isotopes with Calcium-48. Calcium is the 20th element. We will then receive elements from 114 to 118. This method of using calcium-48 is suitable for producing isotopes of these elements from 114 to 118. Furthermore, there will be products of decay. I would like to demonstrate that in order to obtain, for example, element 117, it is necessary to irradiate berkelium. It takes 250 days to get 20 milligrams of berkelium. The flow of this reactor is 2.5 times 10 to the power of 15 neutrons per square centimeter per second. An ordinary reactor is 5 times 10 to the power of 13 or 10 to the power of 14, and here 2 times 10 to the power of 15. During this time, it gains a fluence of 5.5 times 10 to the power of 22 neutrons. In my opinion, this drawn-out process is inconvenient. I don't really like all of these isotopes obtained along the way in order to get to Californium-252. That is, the reactor is working to obtain as much Californium-252 as possible. But if we want to obtain, for example, berkelium or curium-48, it is not clear whether this method is still optimal. If the reactor works for the production of Californium-252, then it usually works in this mode. A clear task was set for our partners. How should the reactor go to work if berkelium is our final product and not Californium-252? Once again, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that in this long cycle, when elements and isotopes capture neutrons, move to the next level, 
then to the next and so on, all nuclei are different. They all have different cross-sections, different cross-sections for neutron capture and different cross-sections for fission. And we have to navigate this cluster of elements in such a way as to obtain Californium-252. In order for us to act more effectively, we first need to set a goal to determine in which direction we should move in. And the second step is to keep this process as short as possible without losing this direction. It was quite a challenging point. And yet, look at what happens. Curium and berkelium are produced by resonant neutrons. At the same time, berkelium has a large thermal neutron fission cross-section. It would be nice to reduce the number of thermal neutrons so that they do not interfere with the experiment while we are moving from curium to berkelium. But this cannot be done if you start with plutonium-39, since thermal neutrons are intrinsic to the process for reaching californium-252. Therefore, a different method was used, reduction in the number of thermal neutrons and starting directly from curium-48. That creates the following situation. Curium-48 captures a neutron, leading to berkelium, after which californium is obtained, at which point californium isotopes will be obtained. If we want to get enriched isotopes, we have to divide them using a mass separator. If we want to get different elements, then we have to divide them chemically. But look, we have an enriched curium-248 target. And in the first stage, we make berkelium-49. Let's chemically isolate berkelium-49. Then, by the time it leaves this group, it will have decayed into californium-249, and then we will have, in principle, three targets at once. One is curium-48, the second is berkelium-49, and the third is californium-49. This method was tried, and instead of 250 days, it took only 30 days. This method is very important, because in the not-too-distant future, when the factory of super-heavy elements will start operating, the issue of target production will become very important and urgent. Let's have a look at this process. Here you can see a hot cell, and this little ampule contains the berkelium obtained by using this method. At the end of this tweezer, there are 22 milligrams of the substance, curium-50. It is necessary to apply half of the substance, around 10 milligrams of curium-50, on a thin foil in order to make a layer, about 350 micrograms per square centimeter. This is less than half a micron of a uniform layer. Apply one and a half microns of titanium to the same thin foil in the form of a wheel essentially creating a ring that will rotate at high speed in order to spread a powerful beam over the entire surface. This is actually done in the form of sectors. Each sector has an area of 6 square centimeters. Six such sectors equals 36 square centimeters with a wheel diameter of 120 millimeters at 1,700 rotations per minute. This is the target that must be irradiated with calcium-48 for a very long time. To summarize, we have calcium-48, its energy, intensity and consumption levels. The doses we need are 10 to the power of 19 and above. Here are all the targets which were used, including the berkelium target. It is highlighted separately because all these isotopes live for a rather long time, and berkelium has a lifetime of only 300 days. Therefore, it was necessary to accumulate it, divide it, 
make a target out of it and create an experiment with this target within 300 days. This was very difficult, but nevertheless, such an experiment was carried out. And as you know, the 117th element was added to the periodic table. <laughs>